Hello and welcome, my name is Ivik and today we are playing Dungeons. This game is the spiritual successor to Dungeon Keeper. Let's start off with the tutorials, starting with the first one. Dungeon Basics. The newcomer evil should learn the basics of dungeon management. Okay, let's go. Ah, the still learning the ropes evil had decided to try the excellent tutorials. Good choice. In this childishly simple introductory mission, it would learn the basics of dungeon management. Things like digging, building rooms, and hiring and firing creatures. Everything a novice evil needs to know. First of all, it admired the center of its power, the dungeon heart. This, if possible, should never be broken, as that would lead to an inglorious and permanent end to the definitely wanting to avoid this at all costs evil. Naturally, the most important resource for any evil genius was gold. One could make the best things out of the glittering metal, and nary a creature was going to let the absolute evil hire it and push it around without a coin or two. Sad, I know, but that's the way the cold, hard, capitalist world of evil works. Although a little gold could also be stored in the dungeon heart, the little snots, the strange name giving evil's workers, had to travel long distances to do so. It made much more sense to build a treasury nearby. The fast learning evil immediately began doing so. Okay. I think it's the same narrator from Stanley's Parable. At least I, I getting the same vibe from him. Okay, room construction menu. Treasury. Okay. Then we do the extra outline too. Sometimes the bored evil's little snots didn't work quickly enough. That was the time to give them a hearty slap with the hand of terror. Naturally, this had to be done immediately. Time to do some slapping. The calculating evil threw a cagey glance at its population limits. These were divided into little snots and creatures. As opposed to creatures, little snots did not have to be hired separately, but were always regenerated up to the maximum limit. And so it was that the massacring evil didn't have to worry if one of these miserable creatures died. It simply had to wait for the next one. At the same time, the little snots were the dungeon workers who dug the galleries, mined the gold, and took care of any number of other things. That's why it was never a bad idea to increase their maximum limit. The thirsty for more little snots evil hurriedly began work. The corresponding research was kindly unlocked for the absolute evil. This was necessary in the tutorial in order not to confuse it with the wide range of possibilities. Besides, there are people out there who really do everything wrong. Is that a challenge? It sounds like a challenge to me. Unfortunately, creatures were a little more demanding than the miserable little snots. A hideout would have to be researched before creatures such as goblins and orcs could be hired. As loyal as the little snots were, they were unable to fight and took to their heels in panicked flight at the first sight of an enemy. Sighing, the unscrupulous evil set about providing a hideout. The hideout can wait. I want to see what's here. Do some more research. Keep digging. I want more gold. I want all the gold. Whoa. Maybe something is here too. No, it's time for that high dot. All right, and we get the high dot. What a surprise! The high dot is the horse bedroom. All right, and bedrooms done. 
Minions, come here and build that high dot. You, oh, build, no. Oops, no. I'm messing stuff up. Don't build that there. Uh, I wanted to pick that little snuts up, but instead I was building all over the place. Uh, which one is the better one? Uh, maybe the army each. craving evil had hired a creature which would from now on do its dirty work. However, each creature consumed a population point. Fortunately, these could be increased just like the number of workers. Should it become necessary to recover a population point, the maliciously grinning evil could always use the egress located at its dungeon heart. Simply toss the creature onto it, a little pull of the lever, and... Oh, whoops. Well, there it goes. These creatures were pretty spoiled. Not only did horde creatures demand their own bunks, they also wanted something to eat. Otherwise, they would soon refuse to do any work whatsoever and go on strike. The deeply sighing evil had no other choice than to build his creatures a gobbler farm to satisfy their hunger. This deeply sighing evil will do it immediately. Good thing I already carved out this room. There, done and dusted. Excellent work. The gobbler farm was now ready. Later, the creatures would also demand other things, but for now, they were satisfied. The fast learning evil had mastered the first tutorial with flying colors. Excellent work. Thank you. Do the campaign. No. Second tutorial now. Evil evilness. The fast learning evil quickly set about sending its creatures into the overworld. Overworld, yes, I'm in. Let's see if I can be the ruler of the under and overworld. Let's see if I can conquer the world before dinner. The fast learning evil had begun the second tutorial. It now more or less knew what it had to do to build a dungeon. Now it would turn to the overworld where it would sow chaos and destruction. Up there waited a Isle of Good, which just begged to be destroyed. The impatient evil got right down to destroying. Before the overworld could be destroyed, a number of creatures would first have to be brought there. The Hand of Terror greedily reached out to grab some. I think I will go for the gold first, then I will conquer the world. What is this? The graveyard. Oh, I see. It's a sleeping place for the undead. Come on, snots. Faster. Don't make me slap you. Almost. There we go. Maybe do some research for more? No, that's not possible. I do believe if I press F2, I have all of them. Easy enough. How do I drop all of them? Yes, like this. To war! First, creatures ventured out into the overworld. The destruction-craving evil could hardly wait to transform all those unbearably rich colors into 50 shades of gray. The drooling evil did not have the omnipotence in the overworld it was used to in the dungeon. Here, it had to direct its creatures the old-fashioned way with... Orders. Oh no, orders? Are you saying I have to do stuff? Let's guide them one by one. What? Oh, freaking turret. I believe this makes me stronger. It is almost too easy. Let's just kill them already. Charge! All of them! Oh, 
that's not going to work. Freaking healer. And next to the face sounds like a good solution to me. Ah, the Isle of Good had been destroyed. To the ground. <laughs> This not only made for a more pleasant ambiance, but also produced some lovely evilness, which could be used for research. The researching evil quickly set about spending its evilness. I wonder on what I should spend my evilness. The troop hungry evil had increased its population limit and could from now on hire more creatures. A great decision. The fantastic evil had understood the basics of the overworld and the advantages of evilness in the blink of an eye. Not that those were difficult concepts, but hey, you take what you can get, so good work. Thank you. I think that didn't sound like a compliment, but I am going to take it. You reached the end of the video. If you liked it, press like. If you want to see more videos, press subscribe and I will see you in the next video. Bye bye.